So, as you saw from the title, which is definitely not clickbait, I want to uh, demonstrate to you folks an amazing, ready to use right off the shelf pedal board solution uh, that you can get right here at, uh, can you see there? Lowe's. Yeah. Can you see it? Maybe you can't. Lowe's. Anyway, uh, take my word for it. And uh, for all I know, something similar could be available at a Home Depot or Menards or whatever you happen to have in your area. But uh, they definitely have it here at Lowe's. And uh, I've been using it for well over a year with uh, one of my pedal boards. And uh, completely by accident on the part of Lowe's, you know, it's intended to be something entirely different, but it just happens to be the perfect thing for putting together a really inexpensive but very effective pedal board. So uh, I'm gonna go inside and I'll, I'll take a picture of the thing. I don't think I'll actually shoot any video inside the store because I really don't want to be that guy per se. Uh, oh, who knows, I might, it just depends if anybody's around. But in any case, stay tuned. I think this is gonna be part one of a three part video. I think in the first part, I'll actually assemble the, the uh, pedal board. Part two, maybe I'll go through the pedals I've chosen and explain why. And then part three, I'll actually demonstrate the whole thing. So uh, that sounds like a good time to you. It sounds like a good time to me. Then uh, stay tuned. So uh, let's get inside Los. So here we are back at the house. And here indeed is the object in question. It is a Cobalt 24 inch K-Rail wire shelf. And uh, this was $24.95 at Lowe's. And as you can see, it's 24 inches across. Uh, don't have my tape measure handy, but it looks to be about 15 tall. Um, so here's the shelving. You can see it's taller in the back than the front, just like a pedal board would need to be. There's space underneath here for a power supply. Plenty of room for all your pedals. They just need to be attached with cable ties. Uh, zip ties, in fact, is what I use. Uh, and this is the good. Now, if you don't need this much real estate, which you might not if you have a smaller pedal board needs than me, uh, there was an 18-inch version, I'll show you a picture here, that was selling there at Lowe's for $20. Uh, but this is what we're working with. So, yeah, $25 pedal board solution all in one, ready to roll. All right, so I'm back at the workbench. And here is our board. It's made by Ryobi. And it's obviously intended to be a workshop shelf. But you'll notice that it already has the proper sloped shape. There's plenty of room here. It's uh, 24 inches by, I think 15. I didn't measure this dimension, but uh, there's plenty of room under here for a power supply. Lots of real estate for pedals. And uh, it's just, I've been using one just like this with Raygun now for over a year. Um, but this is going to be a board for a new band, um, new style of music. And uh, yeah, this will be it. So, speaking of power supplies, I'll show you what I got. Off of uh, Facebook Marketplace. I managed to pick up one of these Dunlop multi-power bricks. This has uh, seven nine-volt outlets and three 18-volt. Uh, I've got more than seven pedals that run on nine volts, but they're mostly MXR pedals. And MXR pedals, for the most part, have a very low current draw. So I'll actually be able to run several of the pedals together on a daisy chain off of one of those outputs. Uh, I don't want to do too much of that because I don't want to have cross talk or noise problems, but it should be fine. Of course, I'll test it. Um, so yeah, so that's what we've got. And uh, next up, I'll show you the pedals I've chosen. And uh, I'm not going to go too deeply into telling you why just yet, but uh, I'm going to show you what I've got. All right, so here's our board. This is a very notable thing. This is our first ever overhead camera shot, so how cool is that? Um, 
Very cool, right? So I've got an assortment of pedals I'm going to be laying out here. They're almost exclusively MXR, and I'll explain why later. Uh, well, essentially, it's the sounds I was going for that happen to be available from MXR. Now, the very first thing I'm going to place is this boost pedal, which isn't even going to stay here. Uh, I have a pedal coming. It should be coming in the mail this week that's roughly this size. So basically, this is a placeholder. What we want to do is lay things out in a logical fashion before we attach anything, just to make sure we know where we want things. So, that placeholder, and we're going to have our Dynacomp, Phase 90. Now you notice I'm leaving a decent amount of space between these. I could get them a whole lot closer. Um, I've got connectors that would allow me to really butt these up, but I learned the hard way from my existing board that you can have your pedals too close together and it makes it extremely difficult to step on one without stepping on more than one. And uh, it's been a real problem for me. Next up, MXR Blue Box. Need to prop this up since it's, there we go, I'm sliding off. Blue Box number one, and yes, Blue Box number two. Now I'm sure that's confusing to some people, but all will be explained soon. Followed by the Prime Distortion. Okay. And then we've got the Rat. Um, it's looking like the Rat's going to have to start the next, next row. Because again, don't want things to be too close together. So we did that. Say the Rat up here. That's a stout little pedal. Heavy and Thick. Okay. Next up, a micro flanger. And yes, indeed, a second micro flanger. Again, all will be explained. And then our delay. Now, ultimately, I'm going to want to figure out a different layout for this at some point, simply because I want to be able to have an MXR micro amp at the end of the chain as a boost. But for now we're going to go with this. So here's our basic layout and uh, plenty of room. Now one complaint that I have about MXR pedals, in spite of the fact that I have a gaggle of them on here, a, well, that's two complaints. A, they could easily have had the outputs on the top. Instead, they're on the sides. That's forgivable. What isn't is the fact that they all have their power jack over here on the side underneath the input. Total pain in the ass, totally unnecessary. And, uh, yeah, it's a design flaw. It's definitely something I would change if I had the ability. So there we have our layout, and uh, in the next installment here, we're going to go over these pedals. I'm going to tell you exactly why I've chosen these, what the thought process is, and so forth. And I will point out that there isn't one pedal on this board that wasn't bought secondhand. Nothing on here is new. Uh, there's no need to buy new. Um, pedals are so readily available, and you save so much money on them secondhand, there's just no good reason. So that's going to be it for part one. Again, we're talking about a ready-made off-the-shelf pedal board, $25. Uh, that's hard to beat by anybody's estimation. All you need is a package of cable ties, which is what we have right here. Got uh, 100 pieces off of... Uh, Amazon, I think it was six dollars. You can probably get them even cheaper than that, but that's what I went with. It was uh, readily available. And uh, yeah, so I'll cut out for now and uh, I'll see you when we come back and discuss what we're doing. Thanks.